In the days when Augustus Caesar was master of many kings and Herod reigned in Jerusalem, there lived in the city of Ecbatana, in the mountains of Persia, a certain man by the name of Artiban, the Median. Master, my friend, carry me like the wind. For these you sell your house and all your possessions? Yes, father. But my son, why is this? Father, my friends, let me tell you of the new light and truth that have come to me through the most ancient of signs, the stars. We all study them. They give us brightness and knowledge. Now, is this not true, my good friends? What is this thing you speak of, Artiban? The ancient prophecy that says, There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. The promise has been given, my friends, that in that day the king shall come forth, and around him shall shine a mighty brightness, and he shall make life everlasting, and the dead shall rise again. This is a dark saying, Artiban. Perhaps we will never understand it. There is nothing dark about the truth, Tigranese. It is as bright as any star we gaze upon. I have asked you all here to invite you to make a pilgrimage with me, that we may worship the newborn king together. Now these gems, the sapphire, the ruby, the pearl, these are to be my tribute, my gift to the new king. My friends, I have made the acquaintance of three wise men, and they and I have searched the holy scriptures and determined the time when the savior of the world should be born. It falls in this very year. In fact, I believe the new star heralding that blessed event will appear tonight. These three wise men are watching the sky from the temple of the seven spheres at Babylon, and I am watching here. If the star appears, they will wait for me there for ten days. Then we will all set out for Jerusalem. This is a vain dream, Artaban. It comes from too much looking upon the stars. <laughs> no king will ever rise from the broken race in Israel. He who looks for him is a chaser of shadows. <laughs> I have no knowledge of these things, and my office as guardian of the royal treasure binds me here. The quest is not for me. I have a new bride. I cannot leave her, nor take her on such a strange journey. Farewell, my friend. I am ill and unfit for hardship. Goodbye. I am much too old for this quest, my noble son. But my heart goes with you. Those who would see wonderful and great things must often be willing to travel by themselves. Oh, it is the sign! It is the sign! The king is coming, and I will go to meet him. I know you are weary, Faster, my noble, uncomplaining friend. I do nothing but sit on you, and I am weary. You have given your all for me, and I ask yet for more, but 
If we are to keep the appointed hour with my companions at Babylon, we must continue at your good speed. And we must be there by midnight. Three more hours faster, then you may rest and renew your... <sighs> Poor man. The desert will have to be his grave, Vasta. Come now, we must hurry on or... What? If I delay but an hour, my friends, the wise men, will think I have given up the journey and will go on without me. I will lose my quest. Yet if I leave now, this man will surely die. I am Artaban the Magian, in search of one who is to be born King of the Jews at Jerusalem. I must be on my way. My companions wait for me at the Temple of the Seven Spheres. I leave you with bread and drink and a portion of healing herbs. I have none else to give you than this for your kindness, my good sir. Our prophets have said that the Messiah is to be born not in Jerusalem, but in Bethlehem of Judea. May the Lord go with you. gone. We are too late, Vazda. We are too late. have waited past midnight and can delay no longer, we go to find the king, follow us across the desert. How can I cross the desert, Vasta? I have no food, and alas, my true friend, you are exhausted. I must return to Babylon, Vasta. Sell my sapphire and buy a train of camels and provisions for the journey. I may never overtake my friends. I may even lose sight of the king because I tarried to show mercy to a sick man in need. We've come so far together, you and I, and I feel in my heart you too would desire to see this newborn king, but the desert is huge and merciless, and it would surely see an end of you, as today I must. I will not forget you, Vasta, my true and noble friend.
Come on, up with you, all of you. Come on, up, up, up. <sighs> At last, my lumpy comrade. I shall surely find him, the king of kings, the savior of the world. I must inquire about the visit of my brethren to this city of Bethlehem and to what house the star directed them. Where is everyone? Have they all gone up to the hill pastures to bring down their sheep? I did that. Oh, forgive me. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I was afraid. I, I, I thought... Well, it's rumored that Herod is sending soldiers from Jerusalem to force a new tax upon us, and all the men of our village have taken their flocks and herds deep into the hills and hidden themselves to escape it. Ah, I understand. I'm Artaban. I have traveled far and desire to know of three companions who came to the city to pay reverence to the newborn king. Three strangers from the east bearing many rich gifts did appear in our village three days ago. It is said that a star guided them to the stable. The stable? Yes, the place where Joseph of Nazareth was lodging with his wife and her newborn child. But the travelers disappeared again, almost as suddenly as they had come. And the Christ child? Is he with his parents at the stable? The man of Nazareth took the babe and its mother and they all fled the village. Is it known where they went, good woman? It is whispered that they were going into Egypt. Egypt? I'm so worried about the soldiers coming. Oh, if only you could have been he whom I've traveled so far and prayed so hard that I might see. Having traveled so far, you must be tired and hungry. Would you not stay and eat with us? This is an offer most gracefully given, and it is most gratefully received. Stay calm and keep the child quiet. I'll take this side of the tree. You check the other. Stop over there and you over there. I am alone in this place, and I'm waiting to give this jewel to the prudent captain who will leave me in peace. Okay, men, let's march on. There is no child here. Father, forgive me. Two of my gifts are now gone. I've spent for man that which was meant for thy son. Shall I ever be worthy to see the face of the king? Oh, oh you have saved the life of my little one. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his countenance shine upon you and give you peace, kind sir. Egypt. I will follow the king to Egypt. I will search for him there. And so it was that Artiban journeyed onward to the land called Egypt. Step by step, day by day, endless week upon endless week, Artiban continued his search. He traveled the towering pyramids, across great deserts, To magnificent palaces of kings.
and to the finest courtyards in the land. But this Lord, whom the prophets foretold and the heavens confirmed, was not to be found. So onward Artiban went, enduring scorching desert sands and cold and lonely nights. And though the years of this relentless quest finally began to take their toll on his body, Artiban's spirit burned brighter than ever, with the hope of someday paying his tribute to this King of Kings. Remember, my son, the king whom you seek is not to be found in a palace or among the rich and powerful. He is to be a spiritual king. His reign is not one of worldly power and riches, but of eternal peace and salvation. Those who seek him will do well to look among the poor and lowly, the sorrowful, the meek and the oppressed. <sighs> you have been in Jerusalem long, old man? I have only just arrived. For I have been here many times before. Perhaps you wish to buy some unleavened bread for the Passover. Pardon, kind sir, but may I inquire where everyone is going? To the execution on Golgotha, outside the city walls. Two robbers are to be crucified, and with them, another called Jesus of Nazareth, a man who has done many wonderful things among the people. But the priests and elders say that he must die, oh. because he claims to be the Son of God. The king, the prince of peace, about to perish. I have found the king at last. Perhaps I can offer this last and most precious gift as ransom to save him from his enemies. But he is dead, and I'm to be sold as a slave to pay his debts. Please help Come on, me. you. That's enough. Move along. Please. With this last pearl, I can keep this girl from a life of slavery. But does she not realize that I have already given to men the precious gifts meant for my king? How can I think of saving her when it is my lord's life that is in danger? It must be done. It is what he himself would do were he here. <gasps> here is your ransom, my child. It is the last of my treasures which I kept for the king. I have given away that which might have saved my king. I've shown him no tribute. I have failed. Come, ye blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you. Not so, my lord. For when fed I thee, 
or gave thee drink, or took thee in, or clothed thee, or came unto thee and healed thee. For these thirty-three years I have searched everywhere for thee, but I have never seen thy face, nor ministered unto thee, my king. Verily I say unto thee, that inasmuch as thou hast done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, thou hast done it unto me. Archibald's journey had at long last ended. His treasures had been accepted, and the other wise man had found the king.